Hello tea cubs, what's brewing? So the day has arrived. Everybody, the day has arrived. The 1920s mukbang is among us. As you can see, I wasn't feeling the red hair for this. I thought, well, Chantelle is clearly going to be making a lot of effort for us. I should put in some kind of effort. Unfortunately, Amazon has betrayed us and I wasn't able to get any kind of fancy costume for her fancy lady party. So I've done my best with what I could find in the house. <laughs> I've got um, an old brown wig of mine that I rescued from the bottom of a drawer. I put it back into a bun so that it just gives the appearance of slightly shorter hair. And then I've added just this to help pin it back. We've got a little moon, a little sun. They looked kind of old timey. I kept, it, kept with the theme, whatever. <laughs> These are the only dangly earrings I had in my jewelry box. That's what we've gone for. Makeup today, I will link below the short Google I did on 1920s vintage makeup, but it appears to be the 20s were kind of the time when makeup really began as a thing that people other than whores wore. <laughs> and uh, the focus was really on making you look a little bit more childlike. You had the blush, you had the little cupid's bow. I've tried to do one today. Mm. I tried, you guys, but we've all seen the really red lips as kind of a vintage look. Um, the really dark eyes, the kind of the kind of makeup you think of when you see Chicago, that kind of thing, the real smoky eye, um, tends to be more a product of the, the movies we see um, because they're all kind of starting up at that time. But the reason you see such dramatic looks in those movies tends to be because the cameras weren't very high quality. So in order to differentiate these parts of the face, you had very dramatic looks. And that's kind of where that idea came from, an idea that still sort of sticks with us today. There is uh, some evidence of different makeup looks available. Like I said, I'm gonna link below the, the sites I looked at, but I will hold my hands up and admit, I am not an expert in either 1920s food or 1920s fashion or makeup. I just did my best with the sources I had. So I've got heavier on the blush and at the front of the cheeks. I've got the cupid's bow. I haven't gone too heavy on the eyes, but I put some eyeliner on top and just smudged it out slightly and mascara on the top lashes, which is where the emphasis was, not so much on the bottom. Uh, so that's where we are today. Okay, let's have a look at Foodie Beauty and see where she's gone with it. And uh, I'm, guys, I'm so excited about this. I was, I was really looking forward to this. I wish I could have dressed up nicely. This is just a black t-shirt I found in my... Oh, I scratched that earlier. It's going to be red, sorry. Um, I found in my drawer. I turned it around because it had a graphic on the front. But we have the idea of the flapper in uh, the 1920s and when you look at vintage fashion the emphasis was more loose clothes a very very straight shape i am not shaped that way my figure would not have been fashionable in the 1920s um i don't mind that she's gone for flapper girl at all i think her channel is not although she says beauty so it'd be nice to see a bit more in the makeup um her channel is not her historical clothing channel She's trying to invoke the idea of the 20s. Uh, so I don't mind that she's gone with a bit more of the stereotype of the 20s. I'd like to see some authenticity in the food because she does say she's a foodie. But most of all, I'm just looking forward to it all, you guys. Let's get into the video. Hello, foodie beauties. Ooh. Well, she's found Josephine Baker, 1920s. Oh, okay. So you can see right here when I said the really extreme look, you can see exactly what I mean here. And that was really, that was really to be able to show the difference for the camera. So it came up as looking very smoky and very dramatic. But in every day, you apparently didn't see it as much. That's based on the small research I've done anyway, but whatever, we'll move on. Right, there's a reason people think of that from the era. Hello. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You guys, look at her! Welcome to another Time Warp video. So this... You look magnificent, my darling. 
We are fancy ladies, we're gonna have a fancy lady party. I am here for you. This video's time period is going to be the Roaring Twenties. Look at that yes. headdress. I will get more into the Love Roaring Twenties when we sit down to eat dinner. A nice meal okay. prepared by me, inspired by the 1920s. What I'm about to show you, Food of Beauties, is a recipe oh. for dip. Can I say her boho mirror she's got behind her? The mirror part isn't centered and every time she shows this, it bothers me. Also, you can see the corner of her green screen through the second mirror. <laughs> and I'll talk more about it when we sit down to eat. Like I said, okay. what I'm about to show you is a recipe for a sandwich, a delicious hot sandwich called the Prosperity Sandwich. So mm. let's get to, let's get to. I have seen the Prosperity Sandwich in my short research of the 1920s. We'll get more into it once I've given her a chance to explain it. Um, initial reaction though, I'm a little bit disappointed given that she went all party town, that she didn't do something a bit more elegant, I suppose. I mean, party dress, party time, party food, maybe, because there's like, from what I've heard of this, I mean, I'm sure it'll taste good, but it doesn't seem to go very far, you know? Seems All a bit right, easy. Here are the ingredients at a glance of what you will need to make this prosperity sandwich. You should be a lady. <laughs> All right, so the first thing you will need here is some unsalted oh, butter. You'll need a total of five tablespoons of unsalted butter, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard of choice. You will also need two cups of whole milk. That's also you will need deli That seems very, very big. <laughs> Is Pete's gonna be eating with her? Because that's that's a lot of food. Eat. That's so a big old recipe. Two ounces of ham and two ounces of deli turkey. And you For will need also two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Now you're going to want a really good hearty fresh baked bread and I'm using sourdough, fresh sourdough okay. bread. Sourdough isn't so bad. I was gonna say, if you're gonna put that much stuff in it, you're gonna need something that can hold up to that much stuff. But sourdough, toasted, it'll manage. It looks delicious. One shallot diced and I used a package of white mushrooms. Now, eight ounces will do as well if you don't want to even cut your own mushrooms. Also, two cups of grated sharp cheddar cheese. Actually. Why should she? They're available, sliced, be convenient. I also forgot to mention that you're going to need two teaspoons of, don't make me say it, but yep. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, she's getting closer though. I probably said that wrong anyways. Love one tablespoon of butter in a large saucepan. Once the mushrooms are done, put them in a bowl and set aside. Eat the remaining four tablespoons of butter and add the two tablespoons of flour and whisk it together to make a roux and cook for about a minute. After that, I've slowly added the... This reminds me of a kind of bastardized croque monsieur, I suppose. And whisk in the one cup of cheddar, cheddar, uh, shredded cheddar, the, sorry, music. the uh, mustard and the Worcestershire sauce. Now this recipe... Oh my is god! Servings, but I'm just... <gasps> Did she cut those with a chainsaw? <laughs> You guys, talk about little and large. What did she do to it? I'm gonna make two, so I cut two pieces of bread. Have you been using a spoon to cut your bread? If you wanna do it about three quarters of an inch thick, I need to invest in a good bread knife, so no it's like rather uneven, but whatever, it's going to taste. Why do you not have a bread knife? <laughs> this is like when she made eggs the other, a uh, few videos ago, and she was like, oh, I don't have a spatula. Are you kidding? You say you're a foodie, you've massacred that bread. <laughs> this is delicious, I'm sure. You're gonna put them under the broiler each side for about two minutes each. Just um, one will be charcoal, one will be raw. <laughs> I know it's a petty thing and I should let it go, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> to get it nicely toasted on each side. Start assembling the sandwich before putting them under the broiler again. So okay. here you just want to add the mush, mush ugh, I can't talk. Mushroom mixture. That's hard. If you can't talk, maybe read 
redo the clip because this is a voiceover you can easily edit it together <laughs> also while you're at it maybe frame the shot so it's a bit more centered to say uh, divide it among the pieces of bread among the four if you're making a four serving but like i said i'm going to add extra to mine that's the benefit of only making two servings albeit huge ones but still so i'm going to divide the mixture here among the two her recipe is before when she's making two servings that she's just said it just means I'm taking four servings and I'm splitting it into two instead of four. That's not... Oh my goodness. Pieces of toast. Oh, this looks so good. And mushrooms on toast is nice. I also forgot to mention that this recipe does call for two slices of tomato on each piece. <laughs> that, again, she seems to have hacked with some blunt instrument. All right, now I'm adding the decadent oh. cheese sauce. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. I'm going to put extra on mine, like I said, because I have extra because I'm only doing the two servings. One cup of shredded cheddar. That is very I rich. used a sharp cheddar. I mean, it's supposed to be, that's the recipe, like. but... Oh. Now I'm going to pop these bad, bad boys back into the broiler. All right, fresh Whoa. out of the oven, and oh my goodness, this looks absolutely delicious. Welcome back. Oh. Welcome back, foodie beauties. <laughs> Okay. One, I, I like the background. I'm not sure about the share like headpiece the chandelier is making around her head, but she's put a nice bar background and it's very pretty. I do like the green screen. I know people get annoyed with it, but I do like the green screen. Why has she served this still on the parchment paper from under the grill? Get, does she still not have a spatula? I was like, get a spatula. Wait, we just talked about how she doesn't have one. Get a spatula, put it on a plate. Come on now, put it on a plate. You're going to all this other effort. <laughs> okay, this has turned out, look at this. I mean, this is indeed a prosperity sandwich. It deserves its name. It's rich looking. You want to tell us about it? Looking, and I'm sure it's going to taste like that. I'm sure it is. Now, it's a lot of cheese. has a lot of dancing to do tonight. I got to do. Not after that cheese, you don't. <laughs> Charleston, all over the dance hall. So... And then I'm gonna go down to the speakeasy and have a few drinks. So, and then we're gonna have a long night of partying. So we need our, well, our like nutrition, it. our prosperity sandwich. And doesn't this look like its name? Like it deserves its name, I mean, it looks rich. It does look very rich. And so that that would symbolize prosperity, I suppose. But tell me a bit more about the sandwich, Chantel, because I've researched it, so I know where it got its name. <laughs> and I wanna see what you think. It looks decadent. Now, so what we have here to drink, first of all, it would not be a Roaring Twenties without some kind of True. alcohol beverage. I'm glad she's done a cocktail because that was a major part of things. I wonder what it is. Now, this is not the highest quality gin for this gin and tonic with fresh lime, but it is a typical drink. Is that all it is? For the 20s. You know, they had the prohibition. So a lot of the and for those of you who don't know, of course, prohibition is a constitutional ban on alcohol. Mm -hmm. So whenever you take somebody's alcohol away, they just make more. And unfortunately, it's a lot of it was cheap, you know, yep. whiskey and gin. But today we're having a gin and tonic with cheap gin. <laughs> but it's going to taste good because it's forbidden, you know. So cheers. Okay. Again, absolutely true. Prohibition. People used to make their, well, people used to bootleg alcohol when they couldn't get it uh as far as i understand and again my research is limited but i'm not the one making the video um from what i understand the rise of the cocktails came from the fact that the, the alcohol was terrible and the cocktail flavors hid it and so you had more cocktails because the the gin the alcohol they were making wasn't that great and they wanted to hide the flavor and so you, you got more flavored drinks. Gin and tonic seems a little bit basic. I think I would have liked a fancy cocktail to be honest. I'm making do with my coffee because I'm in a dry country. Sadly, Chantel did not give me the time to be able to make my own moonshine, <laughs> which I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I looked it up, I was like, how long would I need? Could I do it and just <laughs> pretend it was cranberry juice or something to get around the regulators? <laughs> But no, sadly, it's a dry country. I would have gotten quite a lot of trouble. But there are some pretty easy how-to guides on there, you know? But again, I, I wish she'd gone a little bit fancier with her food. Uh, this, 
I'll see if she explains it before I do, so I don't want to get into it here. But this seems very much like the kind of food you would eat the next day, massively hung over from these shit quality cocktails, <laughs> when you were just trying to like, keep it down and it will cure you, but you might not keep it down. It looks like that kind of food. It's like eating a greasy breakfast and, and hoping for the best when you've had uh, a bit of a night out at uni. Um, it, it, it's kind of, it, it'll cure you or kill you. But if you were a fancy lady and a fancy party gown and, and you were eating, you probably wouldn't want this sloth all over your dress. So it feels a little bit mismatched for the, for what she's presenting. But it, like I said, we'll, we'll let her explain the food and um, it, it is somewhat authentic. So that's, that's something and she has at least thought about the cocktail. So that's something. She's getting it from somewhere, but I wish we had a bit more effort. She's been planning this for a week, you know? I'm gonna need a heavy duty knife and fork for this, guys. I bet. All right, I'm gonna try this one here. Ooh, okay, this looks amazing. Is that the knife you cut the bread with? Because Let's Jesus. give you a bite and then I'm gonna talk a bit about the sandwich, okay? Okay. Learn me. Let's, let's, let's Don't let that be the bite she's eating. Extra sauce here. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh no. Be a lady, oh, Chantel. Cheesy. Be a lady. Don't do it. Cheesy beauty, like. Oh. All right. Can't mess up. My, can't mess up my my flapper outfit. Exactly. This isn't the. Whoa. I mean, she fit it in, which was more than I was anticipating. Right then. Oh my goodness, that was quite impressive. <laughs> I wasn't expecting her to make it. Whoa. I've got a lot going on. That's so. Hmm. So delicious, that sauce. With the sharp cheddar and the Dijon and the Worcester, Worcester sauce. <laughs> and the smoky Almost. jelly meat. Um, the, oh, the mushrooms, the bread, the sourdough, fresh sourdough bread. So. I mean, the combination seems like it would work for sure. I am, that's, that's a lot going on. It kills me that it's still on this wrapper from, from the oven. Please buy a spatula. <laughs> Delicious. Foodie that you are. the sauce on its own. I mean, it's basically bechamel, right? Mmm. Mm. You could taste the shallots in it. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't put Worcestershire sauce so, in bechamel. I'm gonna come over but... here so that I can show you guys. The Prosperity Sandwich is a spin. This, this version, there's a few different versions, mm -hmm. but this version, from what I, from what I gather, is um, a variety of, it's a different take on the uh, brown sandwich. I think it's called the Hot Brown, from the Brown Hotel in the 1920s. And people would, you know, the Brown Hotel was really popular in the 20s. And they would be partying all night. And instead of having, like, picture. eggs and toast or what... Guys, we got a picture she researched. The Hot Browns were actually came from the Brown Hotel in Louisville, Kentucky in 1926. I did look it up. The Prosperity Sandwich is stolen from the hot brown essentially but came from i believe it was called the magnolia hotel but we don't have an exact date on it and i'm going to see what she goes into before i tell you more whatever they wanted something different and of course something more decadent for their guests so they invented this sandwich the hot brown and it's from uh louisville kentucky but this version of apparently prosperity sandwich comes from uh st louis mm. The jaw is clicking, man. <laughs> that crunch on the bread from when we boiled it. Oh, man. I mean, if if she's getting a crunch, that's quite good because she's got so much on there, especially with the sauce, it would be really easy for all those textures to kind of meld together and to lose it. So if it's keeping it, that's impressive. This is one heck of a decadent sandwich. Very rich, that sauce. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's also... A sandwich that showcases the prosperity of the times of the Roaring Twenties. No, it doesn't. Because it is so rich and decadent, and cheese and meat are not cheap. You know, whenever I talk about prosperity, We're this get is into focusing this. on the Western world, and of course it's not equal for all classes in any decade. Um, so I'm just speaking of... Okay. She's taking some feedback from her last, um, from her last video where people were like, well, Poor women have always worked, this idea of being a housewife and all the rest of it. From the small research I've done that might be wrong, that is not why this is named the Prosperity Sandwich. 
<laughs> From what I've seen, it was kind of a bit of shade being thrown at Hoover, who uh, when the depression came in, obviously the, the stock crash at the very end of the 20s, he kept announcing at the end of the year, he was like, oh, prosperity is around the corner. And then clearly it wasn't because the depression was getting worse. So it said that the name for this sandwich was basically a bit of a sarcastic, like, <laughs> prosperity, eh? Um, to him. And so it actually represents the opposite. It's a sarcastic take on prosperity in a time when things weren't very prosperous. The hot brown does not do that. Um, as far as I can tell, there are a few different recipes, but the hot brown tends to include tomato and sometimes bacon, whereas the prosperity sandwich uh, from the hotel menu in Louisville didn't, I don't believe. I did find a link somewhere for the sandwich that apparently came from that menu, but there aren't any exact dates on when it says the 20s. So I don't know if this was something where the name was changed later because of the depression or if they just stole it from the Brown Hotel because it was doing really well and so they were like, oh, we'll get in on that. But um, the depression sandwich was not a uh, depression sandwich. <laughs> the prosperity sandwich was not named, as far as we know, for the prosperity of the Roaring Twenties. Of course, there's a lot of social change and social turmoil and tell us about it what's going on i'm sure you've done research and one of those things was a change in women's role in society in the 20s they were finally allowed to vote and in a way to sell allowed to like they hadn't been fighting for that that's actually a really petty thing for me to say to be like uh allowed really i think it's just a poor choice of words but like it was handed to them without any thought <laughs> Celebrate and express that newfound freedom as women and breaking away from that more Victorian, ultra conservative role of women, the flapper, the modern woman of the 1920s, emerged and she expressed herself as a more sexual being, less sexually conservative, and wore a lot of makeup, excuse me. A lot of jewelry, decadent jewelry, uh, low cut dresses. Both of those pictures look like more contemporary takes on 1920s looks. Because that's what you've got to remember when it comes to movie sources, they're actually trying to please two things. They're trying to get the idea of the 20s as a time period, but they're also trying to appeal to modern audiences. So when you get, if you look at period dramas in the 80s, for example, you often get some pretty big 80s hair in that and the makeup might be slightly more um, palatable to the contemporary audience. So you start to get a bit more of a mismatch of styles and that's where stereotypes start coming in. Neither of those two photos look vintage. I could be wrong, but especially that one next to her with the dark red lipstick, the colorized one, there's no way that that's real. So look at vintage sources. I'm not saying anything you're saying is wrong, but I'm saying research would help you here. Dresses that usually went just below the knee so that their limbs were exposed. And, you know, because Victorian, look at the Victorian era dresses, women were covered head to toe, you know? So, and on top of that, they were dancing, going out and partying all night. They weren't just staying in the home. I'm going to see if I can link the video and you can have a little look more at the history and some contemporary choices. Uh, I think as she did with the 1950s, she's obviously made a bit more effort with the research of the food and we're seeing a little of that. But again, I would like her to source some of her references for what she's thinking of the 1920s because she's looking in very general ideas here. You know, for their families, a lot of women still were, but the lines were blurred for the role of women in the 20s. Women were fulfilling more diverse roles because the, they didn't have as many men to do those traditional things. And much like with the Second World War, afterwards they didn't all necessarily want to go back to just their traditional roles. And war is going to be a huge catalyst, but you're not actually telling us anything. <laughs> 
Oh, am I being mean? Am I just being too harsh? Am I, am I expecting too much for a video she's planned for a week? Maybe from her, but not from a person in general. Just even if you don't want to discuss it, because the point of the video is the food, maybe link a few things down below. That, that would be a great thing. I'll try and do it in my video if you are interested. Um, some of the sources might be crap shot. I don't know. I'm not going to put that much time into it, but it was an interesting time in history and it would be great if we had a bit more detail. Wait till you see what I made for dessert. <laughs> you already told us it's icebox cake. Nice big tomato. Which again is also a contemporary recipe, so that's something. This is delightful. Absolutely delightful. <laughs> So the 1920s were a very, I mean, you had the emergence of the jazz age and mm -hmm. you had you know, dances, you know, people were dancing, dancing and, and swing jazz were very popular. The Charleston, the Foxtrot, the Waltz. By the way, as I'm criticizing her, I did check below in her video and uh, she had the recipe that she used for this, no sauce on the recipe. Um, but she didn't have any other information, so there's nothing linked, unfortunately. Um, people, I mean, it was just after World War One ended, and World War One brought the end of World War One brought a huge amount of prosperity to the United States. The economy was at an all-time high. People were loving life. People were celebrating. I wonder, was it the same in Canada as well? Sometimes I'd love, like, when I look at the Roaring Twenties, you do get a very American perspective on it. And obviously I grew up with British history, so my perspective on the Twenties is a bit more European. I'd be interested to know the similarities and the differences in Canadian history, because I realize often they are linked like that, but I don't know if it was the same in Canada. And she's Canada based. It would be lovely to get a local view on this moving pictures, radio, new technologies. Mm -hmm. mm. Fun fact, frozen food came into being, was it 1922? I will check, make sure that's right. I'll link it down below. Uh, so there was a big opening here for her to be able to look at a lot of different kinds of foods. But we're just here for the food. <laughs> yeah, apparently, but you've missed the trick. This is a delicious, delicious sandwich. That tomato is just going to be straight up raw with all that stuff on it. Now, I think the hot brown uses bacon. You can use bacon if you want to. I shouldn't have spoken so soon. She told us something. You can make it. I mean, it looks fairly simple to make, which Jenny. is, I think, why she's done it. I would have, I know I've said this already. I would have loved her to look for a recipe that maybe isn't in style anymore and give it a go. Um, DC talks a lot about Emmy in Japan, Emmy made in Japan, and she often experiments with historical recipes. And uh, when Chantel said she was making an icebox cake, I actually went and searched icebox cake and uh, she had one to a lime cake made with some condensed milk, I think it was, lime juice, condensed milk, and some biscuits that looked really easy to make, but really delicious. I'll maybe, if I remember all these links, I'll link it down below. But, uh, I don't know, I just, um, we'll let it continue, but. Well, you like it. I feel it's like there was so much items. more she could have done. In the swap. A lot of other different things. I mean, there was this, there was a ton of different food available in the 20s. But we're eating a sandwich. Different recipes. This one looked and sounded the most appealing to me. I mean, with a name like Prosperity Sandwich, right? <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. A hunk of uneven bread covered in melted cheese sauce and meat and deli ham. I, I can believe that. There are people who have a lot of 20s themed parties. I think the Kardashians and the Jenners did that. Mm -hmm. No idea, I don't watch these people. But they do, we got really popular. 
after the Great Gatsby got released, everyone was doing it. And it, to be honest, it sounds like a fun time, you know? I didn't mention it because it's obvious, but of course, F, F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote The Great Gatsby hmm. uh, from the 20s. Those epic Great Gatsby parties. <laughs> Where they ate prosperity sandwiches. Jay Gatsby parties. I had to read that in high school. You have a 1929, that golden decade. Oh, well, this bread is so fresh. <laughs> that just with the stock market crash mm -hmm. and then the Great Depression yeah. um, began. That should be her next decade. She should do some Depression era food just because, I mean, it's just like the food you sort of see during rationing where people are just making do and uh, eating what they can and trying to survive, and, you know? <laughs> but there's a lot of ingenuity that comes in those times and I'd be really interested to see her explore some of that. And even though the sandwich started, was from the 1920s, there's a joke that it got its name. Oh. <laughs> Apparently I should have waited. <laughs> Apparently President Hoover at the time of the depression kept promising that prosperity was just around the corner. Sounds like a false politician's promise even back then. Oh, careful licking your knife, honey. Be a lady. Um, I apologize for my previous statement. I thought she hadn't researched it at all. I'm not sure why then if she knew that was the reason while she then said, no, it was the prosperity of the 20s that named it. But Maybe I just misheard that wrong. I apologize. I should have gloves for this fancy lady party. I'm obviously a harlot. I think it would be so difficult being a world leader no, sure. during a depression. I mean, Trump is managing, but if you can call this managing, but world leaders, in general, that it's a bit difficult. It's a hard job, yeah? And uh, some speculate that's around the corner or has already begun here because of the pandemic. The UK is now in a technical recession, as it's being called, so not to scare people. We don't know to what magnitude yet, but I hope not. Mm. I mean, knock wood, this doesn't go wrong, but um, I got very lucky during the financial crisis of 2008 onwards. I was really lucky because I was working abroad and I was sending my money home. So uh, the yen was doing, uh, was very strong, doing very strongly was what I was about to say. And the British uh, pound was tanking. So I was able to save money quite well. And I'm hoping if money starts to become an issue worldwide again, which likely with the effect of the pandemic, people are gonna have a difficult time. Uh, I'm hoping that I will be fairly secure in my, in my wages because it, again, I get paid in, uh, I get paid in the equivalent of dollars, which is because the, the Saudi currency is pegged to the dollar and then I can send it home. So if there's a recession in England and the pound suffers, Hopefully I'll be okay there, but it's definitely, you know, people are going to struggle, I think, and it's such a shame, you know, um, the response to the pandemic in general has been so uneven. I think it's going to be with us for a while. Sorry, I don't want to bring the tone of this down, but uh, it's, it's a concern I've been thinking about recently, especially with the UK now having um, officially hit recession status. Very rich, very rich. <laughs> rich sandwich for the rich people, right? Was this sandwich for rich people? I no idea. I suppose, yeah. I mean, meat, cheese. I'm not sure what mm. class of people would have eaten this. I didn't look into it. I'm gonna take one more big bite. If that is your bite, I'm gonna cry. That is we're gonna have a quarter of the sandwich. Um, dessert. 
I thought she was gonna slice off that entire middle section. I was like, honey, slow down. I, I love the headband on her. I love how it sits right there. She should wear that every day of her life. <laughs> this kind of meal is better to wait after a day of dancing when you're hungry, <laughs> burnt off calories, and it does. Pass out. <laughs> it looks heavy. <laughs> it looks like a heavy meal. <laughs> Cheers. I'll see you for dessert. <laughs> Why is this in here? My last day, um, the green screen is struggling around the chair there. Actually, I make a little bit and you seem to be getting a little better. What are you watching right now? <laughs> Chantal, you are a fancy lady at a fancy party. You're not even in frame right now. Why did you choose to leave that in? Was it just so hilarious that you couldn't resist? You just couldn't pretend not to be a 10 year old boy? This was unnecessary. God damn pig. Oh god. It's the wow. 19. Is that an enormous bowl? Is that the whole cake or is that just the perspective of the camera? <laughs> Thoughts below. It looks enormous. 20s, okay? Women are allowed to burp. No. No! Burping in public is not a sign of independence. It's just rude. Be okay. a lady. Welcome back. Here's dessert. That's so you're asking cake. what the heck this is. And before the cream melts everywhere, since I had to whip it by hand, and Pete's too. <laughs> you no, so Pete's whipped it by hand for her when her arm got tired, which to be fair, lifting it up all the time, your arm does get tired. Why did she need to whip it by hand? It's not like the rest of everything is super, super authentic. Does she just not have an electric beater? Is that what this is about? <laughs> this is a also, ice box. The fact that it's hand whipped probably explains why it's not keeping its shape. Neither of them seem like they're, <laughs> they're ready to put that kind of effort in. It's cake. So, now let me cut into it and show you, and I'll tell you what it is. Because okay. I want to start eating it. <laughs> Clearly. Yep, that's oh, an entire cake. Why are you serving okay, it to well, yourself you as an entire cake? Ah. So it looks like this. <clears throat> There's layers. Although it doesn't look massively appetizing on the plate, inside it actually looks pretty cool. Like the, sh the stripes. So what it is, oh, it's pretty easy, but it's just chocolate wafers. You know those crispy chocolate wafers, kind of like Oreo. It looks mm -hmm. almost like an Oreo cake. And then you have Basically whipped wafers. cream. Now, I tried, I don't have a mixer. So oh. I had to, we had to whip yeah, this by okay. hand. So we've got no bread life, no spatula, and no mixer in this foodie's house. It's not a surprise, but it's funny nonetheless. And we had to make put it in the freezer a few times because it has to be cold Yeah. to whip cream. Um, Icing sugar mixed with the cream and a bit of vanilla. And you just stack it with whipped cream in between and then you cover it in cream. And these are chocolate shavings. Okay. And you just stick it in the fridge overnight. And you have yourself this icebox cake. So let's try this. I mean, Want looks to try like it's, piece? Okay. it looks like it's going to taste perfectly nice. It does. I mean, it's, it's cream anyway, and biscuits it and looks things. Messy, but Okay, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's store-bought biscuits and cream and some chocolate shavings. Perfectly good. I'm sure it's going to be perfectly nice. It's not going to be angel singing. That? That looks good. I do not like Pete's, but his so it's good in that tone is pretty much my entire mood right now. Like... I'm, there's some food where angels will sing for you. I don't see this being it. <laughs> it is. Oh my god. So the cookies get all soft from the cream. Yeah. And there's nothing like real whipped cream. Like, I know people who've made this using Cool Whip. What the hell? 
Our foodie's got standards. <laughs> she needs real whipped cream with those store-bought cookies. <laughs> if you like Cool Whip, fine. I hate Cool Whip. Oh my god. And the chocolate, it tastes like an ice cream sandwich. Mm. Because that's basically what it is. That's delicious. Oh yes. Now. Oh, cool surprise started, sorry. The thing about why this was so popular, such a popular recipe, is because in the mid-1920s, the first Frigidaire came out and they were trying to get people to use it, new appliances. And so this is an icebox cake because you put it in the fridge, right, for it to set. You don't bake it like a traditional dessert. Also, it is very reminiscent of Oreos and uses packaged cookies, uses packaged wafers, uses packaged food. And in the 1920s, that was the time where um, processed food started to emerge slowly. Things like Oreos, um, the Babe Ruth chocolate bar came out, um, biscuits, crackers, and a lot more tinned and frozen food um, emerged mostly because of World War I and the soldiers having access to convenient packaged foods. <laughs> in freezers. <laughs> no, the gem of truth she's got running through there. I'm with her, I'm with her, I'm with her. I'm not gonna break it down too hard. <laughs> and tin foods. This is really, really decadent. Again, it's cream and cookies. It, I'm sure it's tasty, <laughs> but... There's a lot of party foods. Yeah, there are. Cocktail meatballs, things like that. Because there was a lot of parties. So there's yeah. actual recipes of party foods you can you can make. You can make? But you could make. You're making a video dressed up like a party girl. You could make. You know anything about this one is you want to contribute? I know nothing. He is at least honest about it, unlike Chantel who's making a video. <laughs> I know in the 50s they were all about jello. Gelatin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't make it. Let's not speak of the 50s. Let's, let's move on swiftly. A gelatin recipe. I just made it traditional. But that was the 50s. Hmm. Where they were made. The 60s, too. Yeah. She's From researched. The 70s. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it, but maybe I'll try and make something gelatin. Maybe it's actually good. Comment if you like gelatinous food. <laughs> well, there's got to be people who liked it because it was popular, right? I think it was it the instant jello mixes that became popular because it made it easy. Because I know when I've watched what TV show was it? Oh, it had uh, Mel from Mel and Sue from the British Bake Off on it. And she was looking at a Victorian recipe and she was like, I can't look too far, but that appears to be a foot. <laughs> and it had like a calf foot because molded foods were really popular during Victorian times. And so you could make a very stiff kind of gelatinous uh, pudding mold, but you would literally be using like calf's foot and things like that. So jello wasn't a new thing, but the idea of instant jello and that kind of stuff, uh, it became a lot more convenient that way. I like gelatinous blob. <laughs> gelatinous blob? From Futurama. Mm. I was about to make a really mean comment. We're gonna move on. <laughs> be kind, Melty, be kind. Right. One more bite and then this flapper is gonna flop. He's heading home from the speakeasy. <laughs> okay, guys. All I can say. You could probably use canned whipped cream, which I might do next. <laughs> so canned whipped cream is fine, but if you use Cool Whip, you're a monster. <laughs> or invest in a mixer. They did exist in the 20s, but I just don't have one. Oh man. That cake is so simple. <laughs> it has like four yep. ingredients, yep. but it is so delicious. Oh my gosh, I've never tasted something so good. Well, that's not true, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to um, smoke. I feel like that's the wrong end, but okay. My imaginary cigarette now. Surely the gold end was the mouthpiece. <laughs> Probably. 
pass out in a few coma, <laughs> seriously. Yep. Oh man, that was like a really rich, decadent, decadent meal. And wow. So, oh, I didn't wear the gloves because they're cutting off my circulation. So, <laughs> I don't have any. Anyways, guys, this was like so much fun. I yeah, already right. have an idea for what era I am going to do. Comment below different eras, suggestions on things that you would be. Yeah. I, I'm likely going to be disappointed again, but I do I do want her to continue this series. I really do. And you could do every era. Why limit yourself? If I can improve this, uh, this series, if you want to leave your opinions, and if you want to let me know what decade is your favorite, there's certain decades that probably aren't worth doing. Mm -hmm. um, My just because there's probably very little in the way of, of development and change in food and diet. I don't think so. I think with food, because new brands are always coming in, there's always food trends, just like there are fashions. Uh, I think there's there's a lot you could do in every decade if you were willing to research, which you did a bit more of, but but not that much of. And, and you know, there's no costumes I can find for that time period. Again, but I'm sure that you um, the majority of them can be so. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys in the next video. Ta! Okay, and there we go. Um, I was super excited for this mukbang. I will absolutely give her credit for at least looking up 1920s food instead of assuming she already knows what it is, of um, making an effort with her surroundings, like I said, not necessarily the most authentic, more a modern take on what we think 20s is, but more research than she put into the 1950s. She did also look up contemporary recipes, which I also appreciated. But I do feel like it was the wrong choice of food for how she had set up everything else. I would have appreciated some party food, um, some finger foods, just something that went with the general costume and idea that she was promoting and I feel like these things didn't really. I wish she'd been better prepared with a spatula, a mixer, a bread knife, these very basic kitchen tools that no doubt she could have bought from Jeff Bezos and made Pete thrilled about. You know, the whole thing where she didn't cut out the conversation with Pete so that the burp would be in there was ridiculous and I hated it. Uh, but the the research itself was a small step up from the 1950s, but the whole thing gave the idea of being a bit basic. She could have done this with more effort, she could have done more interesting recipes, she could have put a bit more effort into it, she really could have. Um, but she didn't, because it, it wouldn't be Chantal if she had. <laughs> I'm interested in seeing how she's going to massacre the other time periods. Uh, I do find this series interesting. I really do. It, it's in my area of interest, even the way she does it. And if we're going to have mukbangs, I prefer it to be something like this, that I can at least, you know, go and look at the time period and enjoy it a bit more than when she's just cramming the fast food in. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in whatever time era Chantel pops up in next. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you thought of the video and I will see you next time. Thank you so much little teacups. Bye bye.